So if I do a var dump, which will essentially output whatever is the contents of this function, I'm going to see, hold on, let me just comment this out. I'm going to see a string with a couple of different paths. So we, every path is separated by a colon here. So I've got just the dot. I've got application, xamp, xamp files, lib, PHP. And then I have uh, the pair library as well. So one technique that really helps is to include other paths. So if we want to store classes in another part of our program or another part of our application that's not necessarily in the, in the public folder, then we would have to add that as a particular path. So we're going to start with that. If I go back here, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder com, which is a little strange at first, but it'll make sense in, in a minute. And for now, I'm just going to take this user.php class that I've written, and I'll move it into the com folder. Now, if I go back to index.php, and I want these lines to function properly, of course, instead of doing require once uh, user.php, I would have to go up a folder into the com folder, and then I, ha I would have to grab it there. If I refresh this again, John Smith, everything is working. See, if I just did user.php, then I would get this warning and it would say, you know, I can't find user.php and it would fail, which is, of course, bad. So it can get a little difficult to find these classes as we're moving forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what is called an application path. And an application path is the absolute path of where we are on the file system. And this is going to be different from one web hosting environment to another. But there's a really easy way of handling that kind of ambiguity. We're going to define a global constant, and we're going to call this application path. And it's going to use this real path function, which is provided by the PHP framework. And we're just going to do this. And then I'm going to echo application path. So what you can see is I'm asking PHP for the real path of whatever is up one folder using two dots here. If I refresh this, I'll see that in my case, hold on, let me just uh, comment this stuff out. If I echo what the application path is for me, it's users, John, sites, which is where I keep my websites, and then killer PHP. So if I wanted to get the real path of just the folder that I'm in, and I just put a dot, then I would get killer PHP slash public. So that's just, we're defining this application path. Now, I want to add that as an include path so that PHP will automatically know that you know, if it's looking for a file, that it can look in the application path. So that's kind of the first step. Um, so let's see. Okay. I'm going to start by saying paths equals array. And in there, it, it's going to be the application path and then get include paths or get include path rather. So now we're just adding the application path as a path in our collection here. And the last thing is I'm just going to set include path. And here we're going to use a function called implode. And what implode does is it basically allows you to take a collection of, ob uh, collection of items in an array and then put them all you know, next to each other, concatenate them all together using uh, something in between. In this case, we're going to be using a path separator. So in PHP, in the documentation, they call this the glue. So I'm just going to implode, and my glue in this case is a path separator. And the reason that this is a global constant is that it's different if you're on Windows or if you're on uh, a Unix box, the path separator is actually different. 
and then I'm going to pass in the paths variable. So now I'm setting anything in here as additional paths that PHP can go ahead and look at for finding files when we do the require once statement. So if I uncomment this, it's still not going to work. We're going to get an error and it's going to say we can't find user.php. However, when I look at the include path here, you'll see that it's added users, John, sites, killer PHP. So that wasn't there before, which is kind of neat. If I add another include path with com, see I've concatenated com to application path, then it's all of a sudden going to work. And then these two instructions down here where we create a new user and then we get the name are going to work again. So we want a way of dynamically setting our include paths and requiring different files. And at first you might say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to have to create for every single folder in my application, I'm going to have to create a new include path, which might seem sane at first, but actually that could turn into quite a hairy mess as well. So there's actually a function that PHP will allow us to write that will automatically load paths that we're looking for. I'm going to comment out this require once. And this function is, is just that. It's called autoload. And what autoload does, and we're going to accept a class name, I'll explain that in a second, is it runs when it can't find something. So when I can't find new user, when the parser has trouble finding this new user object, it'll immediately go to the autoload class that we've defined here, and it'll say, hey, I'm looking for this thing and I can't find it. And hopefully in this path, or in this, in this autoload function, we're going to be able to find that particular file. So I'm going to just do an echo on class name, and then I'm going to put in a return statement. Let's see what happens. So you can see here that it's echoing user, and then it says fatal error class user not found. So this isn't, you know, this is basically we have to take this user and we need to concatenate .php and then run the require once statement. So one way of doing this is to essentially go in and say require once and then class name and then we can concatenate that with .php. And then it's going to work again. 